This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 296. Why exercise won't make you thin, part two, a guest post by John Gilbert with bengreenfieldfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Happy Monday, and for those of you in the States, a very happy Labor Day to you. Welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web. Now, today's post is actually a guest post on Ben Greenfield's site. This post comes from John Gilbert, a wellness coach. And the reason it has part two in the title is because it's a rebuttal to a Time Magazine cover story titled, Why Exercise Won't Make You Thin. I love this because I've actually written to Time Magazine as well. Sometimes the information, especially the health information they present is very misleading. And so one of the reasons I really love this post is I've done this very thing. And I've written letters to the editor saying, uh, you want to be careful about saying this or that when it comes to nutrition and health. So without further ado, let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. Why Exercise Won't Make You Thin, Part 2, A Guest Post, by John Gilbert with bengreenfieldfitness.com. The author of the Time Magazine article makes a few important points. Particularly, I enjoy his perception of exercise transcending the gym. Exercise, or more specifically in the author's view, physical activity, can occur anywhere and is often singularly thought of of taking place inside of a gym. Raising the awareness of this perspective is most definitely significant. The author also discusses how people will exercise to eat more food than they otherwise could without gaining weight. The awareness of this approach to exercise is also significant. Though these points are important, the confusion the article is likely to create in the public is a much greater negative than the positive points in the article. The article seems to perpetuate an already confused public as to what exercise physiologically does for the body. For example, he mentions quote-unquote fat turning into muscle and quite blatantly makes the enormous amount of research on exercising to improve a better quality of life quite insignificant. However, it could also be argued that his article perpetuates people to think about exercise more in the realm of the health benefits since he is encouraging people to move more, move more often, and without the focus on just aesthetics and weight loss. Yet, a more likely conclusion that can be made is that him de-emphasizing the health benefits of exercise may set people up for failure. This is because research demonstrates that those who exercise primarily for the health benefits as opposed to aesthetic benefits will sustain an active lifestyle longer. No matter how the article is argued to be interpreted, undeniably, the main confusion of the article resides in the flawed, in common sense and scientific evidence, premise of exercise preventing weight loss via stimulation of overeating. If this were the case, and I'll quote the American College of Sports Medicine, wouldn't those who exercise the most be the fattest. And of course, this is not the case. In attempts to provide a solution to the recommended 60 to 90 minutes of exercise per day, the author proposes very few details about increasing overall physical activity throughout the day. Without objective recommendations, the extremes of interpretation could lead people to think they were doing what they needed to lose weight, but without success and leaving them even more confused. If there's going to be a proposal of low-intensity physical activity being more important for weight control rather than a specific exercise routine, this needs to be explained beyond just generalities. Since confusion is detrimental to the public's accurate education on healthy living, so is the timing at which the article is released. This article comes at a time, no pun intended, when primary prevention efforts such as exercise need to be more than ever with the rise of so many chronic diseases. The article also undermines the momentum of a healthy lifestyle, including exercise. People need to be careful about taking this article at its face value. Hopefully, the inaccuracies in this article will spur an educated response from those in the mainstream health and fitness community. Already, those in professional and academic communities have responded to the Time Magazine article. An August 10 message to the American College of Sports Medicine members alerted them to the issue and invited them to join the campaign. Tools provided included a list of message points and a draft letter to the editor for members to adapt and send to local media. Many have done so. Others have chosen to blog on the issue or send out tweets on Twitter, add information to their Facebook pages, or otherwise communicate the importance of healthy lifestyles 
based on science and medicine. So you can see the American College of Sports Medicine rallied its troops in response to this article. A more succinct and well-educated response comes from Jim Whitehead, the executive vice president of the American College of Sports Medicine. And I quote, The cover story of Time magazine addresses critical and at times complex issues about physical activity, diet, and weight. The magazine brings needed focus to the importance of our behaviors and lifestyles, especially physical activity and diet, not only for weight, but also for our overall health. The article would benefit even more from some helpful refinement in that it includes occasional misunderstandings of the scientific and public health evidence about these matters, and at times, draws more on personal experience and viewpoints. Last October, for example, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services released physical activity guidelines for Americans. That historic report comprehensively documented the strong evidence that has been building for decades in regards to the importance of physical activity to health. The physical activity guidelines underscored the strong, compelling scientific and medical evidence on the important role of physical activity not only in the prevention of weight gain and a weight loss when combined with diet, but also powerfully demonstrated that physical activity lowers the risks of early death, heart disease and stroke, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and much more. The bottom line is this. Very few people are able to maintain a healthy weight without regular physical activity, and those who do are still at high risk of chronic disease due to being sedentary. We think the readers of Time Magazine, the overall American population, and our policymakers in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere would gain from knowing this or having it re-emphasized. This would be not only a public service, but also something that could save lives and the health of countless millions, and also could help guide the future directions of health policy and healthcare reform in the United States. End quote. To summarize, Healthy habits of physical activity and exercise will result in better weight control when compared to other habits that do not include these actions. You just listened to the post titled Why Exercise Won't Make You Thin, Part 2, a guest post by John Gilbert with bengreenfieldfitness.com. I completely agree that the Time Magazine article was very misleading. We know from lots and lots of data that when people incorporate a regular physical activity routine, some sort of exercise that's consistent, it does in fact help them not only lose weight, but keep the weight off. And this is from lots and lots of really good data over the long term, studying people who have lost weight and kept it off, for example, for more than two years. That's hard to do in research. And it's amazing to me that in the Time Magazine article, they said fat turns into muscle. That is a huge myth, and it's physiologically not possible. Fat cells are one type of cell. Muscle cells are a different type of cell. Fat cells do not become muscle and vice versa. Unless you're from the planet Krypton or one of the mutants from the X-Men series, this is probably not gonna happen for you. In fact, let me put it another way. When you exercise, does fat turn into muscle? No. Muscle, therefore, does not turn into fat when you don't exercise. What happens instead is your muscles get smaller, but they won't turn into fat. At the same time, your body might accumulate more fat, but again, one cell doesn't become and transform into another. So my bottom line, if you're thinking about losing weight, if you wanna maintain your weight, definitely incorporate some physical activity or exercise into your daily routine, or at least make it as consistent as possible if it's not every day. Now, before I go, If you want to interact with some like-minded people, come join our Facebook group. We do bonus book giveaways there, and it's a nice way to show your support. You can find it by searching for Optimal Living Daily on Facebook or use our shortcut link. It's oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. We'd love to see you there. That's it for the Monday Labor Day episode. I hope you have a great start to your week. I'll be back tomorrow as always, but this time with a post from Nerd Fitness. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, 
Come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.